Zo. Give me a name then. Well, give me a name then. I met Kay through a friend. Um, she worked at Presswich Hospital the same time that I did. And when she split up with the partner, she came to live with me. And at that time, me and Mark were drifting apart. We were splitting up, really. And um, they got together, and she became the Falls manager. What do you mean you want some money? What are you talking about? You're pirating my bloody stuff, Tony. What are you talking about? I pay for your equipment. Kay was actually the tough, abrasive one. She was the boss then. Kay, Carol, hello, love. Hello, lovey. Kay would get very drunk and was even tougher than Mark and would jump on you and attack you and go on about the money or generally act in a ridiculous way. And one could be quite fond of her, but I was quite scared of Kay Carroll, to say the truth, in a way. I've never been scared of Mark. He's being an arsehole and he's calling me, you know what I mean? The idea of a manager seemed to be against the original ethos of the fall, so that was a bit problematic. And Tony left. I left. And then a whole new fall emerged. Right, noise! Finally, Bingo Massa's breakout was released, much later than anybody had intended. But there was a certain amount of redemption involved. Some critics got where the fall were coming from. Well, it was uh, actually my producer at the time, John Walters, who... Um, first heard them and I think they were a support band in uh, at a gig in Croydon and Walters heard them at that and wrote a, a letter. John Walters wrote me a letter and said you know you are the worst group I've ever seen in, <laughs> in the history of mankind. <laughs> he's going like that John Walters boy. you ever meet him? No he's fucking fantastic. He said you were the, the worst, uh, tuneless rubbish I've ever heard. You know, even worse than Susie and the Banshees. This is what he wrote, you know. You were even worse than Susie and the Banshees. I, I didn't believe it was possible. You know I mean? <laughs> He's a gem. What a gem. He said, please do a session. <laughs> We do it again, kids, with a bit of fucking, uh, just uh, hit it a bit harder. Rhythm section of the keyboards. Steve, you got to fucking yeah, play a bit harder. you got to be in tune and you've got to do it on the changes. Uh, you heard a, a taste of this earlier on. It'll be slightly louder now, I think. I see the fall and blindness. To be realistic, you barely need anything else, do you? The 24th session for the programme, as far as we know, uh, the very first of them was recorded at Maida Vale on the 30th of whichever the fifth month is, in 1978, and broadcast... The four were on the way to do a John Peel session, and the bass player at the time, he'd had a few ups and downs, a guy called um, Eric Ferret, and I think the actual point at which Eric was thrown out of the band was um, he decided that he didn't want to come along to a Peel session. So I was going along to help him with the gear, and when we got back, I got a phone call from Mark asking me if I wanted to join. Now, bearing in mind, these were, it was my favourite band. I was happy to be a roadie, and I was being asked by Mark Smith to join the fall, and I was still 16 years old, and I, I didn't have to think long and hard before saying yes. Like the granddad used to stand outside prisons and that, and when, when the police say, you work for me, <laughs> this is a bit like me. You know what? Or oh, you can play the bass, right? You're in. <laughs> Don't have auditions or anything. It usually pl comes off right, actually, touch wood. I 
I remember once we went to record Live at the Witch Trials and we ended up recording the album in a day. So we were wandering around London, particularly Martin, Carl and I, and I remember saying to me, you're Mark's puppet, aren't you? You know, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and they're saying, yeah, you'll do anything that he tells you, that's why he got you him. you know, we wanted our mate and I'm going, oh, I'm sorry, you know, but what can I do? I think they were the seeds of um, the split in the band and it, and it becoming not a load of mates, all pulling together and working together, but Mark wanting to foist his own kind of intentions on everybody else. It was a matter of control of direction and where they were going. And Mark had a certain idea, I think a fixed idea of how he wanted it to be portrayed. A year after I joined, Steve and Craig joined. And again, we were all in the same situation. We were there and happy to be, you know, Mark's foils and his backing band, really. Uh, whereas Martin had already got sort of disaffected with the whole thing. You know, him and Mark being the sort of core of it and the, and the real creative force behind it. Martin had realised that he was kind of being sidelined, so he, he just had enough and went. It was a drastic old fucking chant. The shit with pants. Not right, not, not literally. I mean, I was scared to death. The guys who I'd seen carrying the equipment onto the stage were suddenly playing because Steve suddenly went onto the bass and Craig Scanlon then became a guitarist and Mark moved on to guitar. So there's this ever changing kind of movement of the fall. I don't know how we ended up going around with them, but just like these really strange people from the other side of Manchester who just seem to be really into the music. Is there anybody there? Yeah! yeah. Dragnet was like uh, 